In today's video, we have awesome reveals of a new vehicle, a new weapon, as well as two new characters for Halo Infinite, and how one of these new characters really hints at something drastic happening to a character from Halo 5. We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So out of nowhere, Grandbrother One, the lore daddy himself, decides to drop a nice cannon fodder for us to enjoy, short and sweet and to the point, but certainly packs a ton of information that reveals a lot about Halo Infinite. And normally these cannon fodders are just like little additional information about Halo and its lore, kind of cool stuff. This one gave some really cool information about Halo Infinite, what to expect from the game, from the characters, weapons, and a vehicle as well. So I figured we'd jump into the showcase the whole thing for you guys. So if you like these news and informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, well make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. So let's just start off with like the big news drop I'm sure a lot of people are going to be talking about. And it's the new character of Hyperius within Halo Infinite right here. This guy looks like a total freaking badass. This guy looks absolutely insane. Man, look at his face. Look at those eyes, they're beet red and just like, I think he's missing teeth from just being in so many battles. Like, what is this, like some kind of jawline that he has as part of a helmet? Like, this guy looks absolutely insane. I would genuinely be terrified to fight against this guy. But it sounds like you will in Halo Infinite, as he's part of the Hand of Atriox along with Eshram and Jacob Redumni. You gotta love his banished brute hammer, which looks super badass as well. The black and red just looks super menacing. There are two main things I wanted to point out here for you guys, and that's one is the necklace of Hyperius. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure those are fingers of Spartans that he has around his neck, which that is just metal AF right there. Like, that's pretty freaking brutal. Pardon the pun right there. And I'm sure one thing I know you guys have probably all seen from other videos or just previously, because this guy was actually part of a toy leak as well. Just to the right, you see this Spartan helmet with like, looks like a chest piece as well, strapped onto his shoulder as like a shoulder pad thing. This looks straight up as like the Hunter armor set that Locke used in Halo 5. Here's an image of that toy leak like we mentioned earlier. This is the Mega Bloks version of Hyperius right there. You can see it looks like they kind of switched the shoulder up, but you can still see a very prominent like Hunter helmet from Locke right there on his shoulder pad. This was actually mentioned previously and started speculating a lot about if Locke is actually dead within Halo Infinite. Because if you look at Locke's armor right here, this is very much like that's his helmet right there. Like there's very much a reason why it's Locke's helmet, the Hunter armor set, is not used by anyone else in Halo because they need to be able to have a visual identification that this is Spartan Locke without being able to see their face. So they deliberately made Locke's armor look unique compared to all other Spartans out there. So why does Hyperius have his freaking headset and armor piece right there on his shoulder and even like the chest piece right here, like take note of the chest piece here. You got the kind of smooth shape right here of the uh, chest piece along with that buckle right here as well. If we go back to Hyperius, you can see right here like, yeah, that's the same buckle, the same type of chest piece shape right there. That's his helmet, even with like the little arrow piece on his head, like that's Locke's helmet. I don't care what anybody says, that that's Locke. Now that might just be pure speculation, but I mean, who else wears that armor set? Obviously him. Now, does this mean that Locke is actually dead already within Halo 5 killed off screen? Well, not necessarily because Sketch actually referred to this back when it was a toy leak. While we unfortunately had toy leaks earlier this year, products appearing now are all expected and part of the roadmap, referring to the Hyperius leak and having Locke's armor on his shoulder. We wouldn't intentionally spoil key details, so don't read too much into anything. Not every collectible is a literal tie-in to the game. But I'm sorry, when you see this mega constructs right here, and that's Hyperius right there, and then once you see him in the concept art saying that he's going to be on Zeta Halo in the game, that's kind of a reveal of something bad happening to Locke. 
This doesn't necessarily mean that Locke is dead though. Locke's last known location is on the Infinity, which was part of the Battle of Zeta Halo. So maybe Locke went on to Zeta Halo, got his butt kicked, maybe they ripped up his armor in pieces, but maybe he like escaped out of something. There's not confirmation that he is dead, but certainly was uh, shown why you don't mess with the Banished. Now, everything about Locke is pure speculation at this point, but I just like, I can't help but see like that's Locke's helmet on his shoulder. And if he's going to be in Halo Infinite, how's that tie into Locke? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Now the next character that you will see in Halo Infinite is Tavares right here. And this guy is kind of a spooky looking one. This guy is much more like stealthy kind of look, I guess all black for the most part, uh, with some really kind of spooky kind of glare on his face. I don't know if he's like kind of supposed to be like that more stoic, kind of lesser spoken, but kind of like eerie kind of character. I get the spooks from just looking at this guy. Like he just kind of freaks me out in a way. Like he's just like some cold calculated killer where all the other brutes are much more just like up front and just insane enemies to fight against. Again, this guy is part of Eshram's squad boys, if you want to call him that, along with Jacob Redumni. This guy is part of the Silent Shadow and he's just like a total badass with like a robot arm and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure that was taken from a Spartan as well. So these guys like to take stuff from Spartans and just make it their own which is just so cool to think about. And all these boys are going to be joining our main man, Eshram, right here. If I want to kind of show you guys this concept art, because obviously when we look back at some of the other stuff from like Hyperius and Tobaris, that they look awesome, right? And this is the original concept art of Eshram. And I just want to point out how different he actually looks compared to in-game. So I wouldn't translate these concept pieces of art as one-to-one -one translations for in-game content. As you can see right here, this is what Eshram looks like in-game, uh, quite a bit different from the concept art that we just looked at. So there isn't going to be a one-to-one -one translation, but you get the general idea of what these guys are going to look like, but still very awesome. The next thing we take a look at is the scrap cannon. Yes, this is a brute banished style turret that we've never really seen before. All we've had is just plasma turrets and UNSC turrets. Well, of course, now you got a banished turret as well. And Grim Brother One wrote a little bit of a description talking about this. Its nickname was the Gatling Mortar. What's that? You don't enjoy hot metal being hurled at you from uncomfortable distances while you're just trying to mind your own business and defend humanity? Well, too bad, so sad. Shouldn't have made the brutes mad. Now this is very much a very early concept art of what this scrap cannon looks like, but again, looks pretty awesome. I can't wait to see how this shoots in Halo Infinite. And lastly, we have the reveal of the Razorback Warhog. This thing looks absolutely insane. And what they refer to it as saying in the development update that it's a more like robust brother in a way of the Warthog. This looks very reminiscent of the transport hog that we had like back in Halo 3 that we actually never really got the chance to utilize as a transport hog. Hog, mainly just because of the lack of a turret in the back so it's probably much more of a passive vehicle that's probably meant to more transport you around but like every vehicle is meant to do that anyways so very awesome to see we have a brand new vehicle coming in for halo infinite so what do you guys think about these reveals are you just kind of almost confirmed that Locke is dead is he still alive let me know in the comment section down below i do try to read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well if you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently or been out of the loop for halo for the last few days or so Check out the videos on the screen right here. I can link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.